don't know about you, but uh, yesterday, you know, yesterday, you know, like not today, but what we experienced yesterday, you know, like in time that was like 24 hours previous, it sucked. <laughs> what a bummer. I don't know about you, but man, my day was tough. You know, I mean, my bathtub overflowed. Oh, it could have been worse. could have been the toilet. Oh, no. God forbid that it would have been the toilet. What a mess that would have been. Or would it? Then it seemed like no matter what I did, you know, if I turned to the left or turned to the right, it was like, uh-uh. Whatever it was was wrong in his sight. And I just went, huh, man, what is up with this? You know, and kind of went, am I in sin? <laughs> I mean... That was yesterday, and really, it was a bummer. I mean, I just don't know what was going on. God seemed to have been far away. He was distant. You know, he didn't come right out and say, Well, Michael, you blown it. You take it one step too far, and I'm sorry, but that's it. You had your chance. You've gone too much into the left field, and now you're in trouble. You've crossed that line. You have forsaken grace. You've gone beyond the reach of my hand, and guess what? Boom! I pulled my spirit from you. You grieved the Holy Spirit. You have committed the unpardonable sin. God, no! You ever felt like that? <laughs> Man, I was like, okay, you made me this way, so what do I do now, Lord? <laughs> Commit your way into the Lord, trust also in Him, and He'll bring it to pass. And somehow, my day was that bad. It felt horrible. It looked worse. It was one of those days that you kind of go, Man, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't even have got out of bed. Because sometimes, that's the way you feel. And sometimes, God doesn't say a word about it, because it's something you're going through that you got to deal with. And you may not always have the answer. As a matter of fact, you may do like I did, if you're in ministry. And some of you ministers of God, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you pastors and teachers and elders and deacons and whoever you are, you know what you do. You keep on keeping on. <laughs> you exercise a little faith and you go, but Jesus died on the cross for me, so I'm under grace. Or, as we like to say in real life, you wing it. <laughs> and you wait for tomorrow. Sometimes you pray, you know, you fast, you ask people to pray for you. You do all the spiritual stuff, of course. But the reality is, is that your day sucked, and you had a bad one. So what? In my mind, that was yesterday. So what about today? Is it going to be worse? Is it going to be better? I always go to the Word and say, huh, Lord, you know, we're not doing this 400-year thing, you know, this is the end of the world, you know. I was born for such a time as this, and God, you created me the way I am, and, you know, uh, God, I'm your, you know, pardon the expression, mule, Malam's mule, you know, and whatever comes out of my mouth, that's your Word, Lord, you know, you paid me. I'm yours, God. Help. <laughs> Remake me if you need to, but whatever it is, God. Okay, can you quit squeezing me? I'm feeling the pinch. But that was yesterday. That's not today. I don't know, but I feel a lot better today. My bathtub didn't overflow, and neither did my toilet. Praise the Lord! <laughs> wow! That's cool! I don't have feelings of blahs or anything else. 
Matter of fact, I feel kind of relaxed. So, you know, maybe yesterday doesn't hold, have a whole lot to do with today. Now, some things might carry over, like, I'm kind of glad yesterday, or yesteryear, Jesus died. Now, I kind of like that, because that kind of goes forward, you know. It doesn't just stay yesterday. It kind of extends itself onward to my tomorrows. But for me, in life, because I'm not God, my yesterday doesn't have a whole lot to do with my today, except that, man, I remember it was a bummer. <laughs> and whatever it was, I'm glad that God took care of it. So, as I recall the things of yesteryear, I remember going through other times of those bad days that I can commit to God and leave with Him so that nothing from yesterday is carried over to today except the realization that God took me through it and that He will always be with me and never leave me nor forsake me. So sometimes thinking about yesterday is maybe not too bad a thing, but if you're focused in on the ugh that happened, you might have missed the point about yesterday. They that dwell under the shadow, they that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. Hosea 14.7 The day closed with heavy shout, heavy shout, boy, you can tell I'm having a good day today. The day closed with heavy showers. The plants in my garden were beaten down before the pelting snow, and I saw one flower that I had admired for its beauty and love for its fragrance exposed to the pitiless storm. The flower fell, shut up its petals, and dropped its head, and I saw that in all its glory it was gone. I must wait till next year, I said, before I see that beautiful thing again. The night passed, and the morning came, and the sun shone again, and the morning brought strength to the flower. I looked at it, and the flower looked at the light. There was contact and communion, and power passed into the flower. It held up its head, opened its petals, regained its glory, and seemed fairer than before. I wonder how it took place. This feeble thing coming into contact with the strong thing and gaining strength. I cannot tell how it is that I should be able to receive into my being a power to do and to bear my by communion with God, but I know it is a fact that when I am with Him, then I am made strong. Are you in peril through some crushing heavy trial? Seek this communion with Jesus, and you will receive strength and be able to conquer, for I will strengthen you. Yesterday's grief becomes today's glory. You know, I like that. Yesterday, I was beaten down. Today, I'm... Yesterday, I was... Today, I'm... So, life is kind of the application of learning to recognize that the storms of life will come, like Jesus said. The winds will blow, the reality will hit, suddenly it will dawn on you. <gasps> Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto me. But I just had a hurricane blast through and it wiped out my house, my car, my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then the neighbors come in and they try to help. And the government comes in and tries to help. And your church comes in and helps. And you go, man, you know, I didn't know I had this man, this much help. I didn't know this, these, this many people, these many people, <laughs> this many people would be so concerned about me as to reach out a hand to help me. Wow, had I not been cast down I would not have found all these people who care and dare to reach out and touch my life. 
Maybe. Suffering the loss of all things in a tornado, in a flood, in a tragedy. Maybe if it brings me closer to God, it causes me to understand Him in a more intimate and personal way. Maybe that's not such a bad thing after all. Maybe then I could be like Paul and count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Maybe. Maybe yesterday's tragedy and travesty of my expectations is just so bad after all. Because now my realization of God's provision has suddenly opened my eyes to the world around me and the people that reach out and touch because now that I have been receiving God from all these people that care and even as I have been helped by my friends and neighbors in church I think when I see them in need I'll do the same I think I'll reach out in Jesus name and I will help because I've been helped.